Hello everyone, welcome to another video of Coding with Sejas. This is the ninth video in the UFI series. If this is your first video in the series, do click this link to access the entire playlist. That way, you can access the training from the starting and have a better understanding when we continue this video. Also, subscribe this channel to get the update about more videos like this. In the last video, we learned about components. We learned how to create an application independent and reusable and we saw the benefits of it. We have also seen how to provide configuration or settings of an application as a metadata. If you look closely, you can see the configuration or the metadata is provided as a JSON file, whereas the entire component is written in JavaScript. So it makes a lot of sense to have this as a separate file and today we are doing the exact same before we move further if this is the first video do click the link above this video to access the entire playlist i have moved the last video's code into a new folder called component and it is pushed to the github you can access the github using the link in the description so let me go ahead and create a new file and let me call it manifest dot json we have to create this file adjacent to component js so what is this contain contains a json object the first thing i need to provide is a version and this is nothing but the version of the json file so we will provide the latest json version according to the sdk which is currently on the current version which is available is 1.12.0 now we have to provide some sections the first section i use is sap.app next section i am going to create is sap.ui and another one is sap.ui5 and that's it for now so what does each section contain so the sap app here represents the application related configurations it contains the default ihn and model from which where the title should be taken it contains the app title it contains the application namespace etc so let's add some configuration into sap app so first thing is id so i have to provide the namespace of the application so we have used the id in dot sejas dot ui5 dot app now i need what type is this manifest representing so usually we provide two values for this one is application and another one will be library so we can create a ui5 library and the configuration also will be specified in manifest json so it's nothing but type this application and we need to provide the IATN model where it is present. So we have that in the IATN clash IATN dot properties. That is where our IATN model is. We have to also provide the title for the application. So let's open our IATN file. And let's use the page title what we have mentioned here. That is nothing but the page title. We also need to provide a description. So that is description. And we have to give something like I'm creating a new key application explaining manifest usage also i'll change this into manifest explanation so again i have to provide the key over here which is the description key 
so for now i will not have this file because we will only maintain one language code and we also need to provide the application version which is nothing but the version of our application not the manifest i'm giving it as 1.0.0 which is my first version and that's it in the sap app section now let's go to the ui section so in sap ui we need to explain or we need to provide configurations for the sap ui it's like what kind of technology we are using in this application and what are the different supported devices you can get info about this in the sdk and i recommend you to go to the sdk and understand application descriptor the manifest json is also called as application descriptor which you can see in the sdk so i'll provide here the technology and the technology we are using is ui5 and we have to provide some device types and we do support desktop mobile you can also call it as phone and tablet so that is in the sap.ui section now we have to provide configurations with respect to sap ui5 so what do we give here here we can specify configurations like the root view which we have seen uh, provided in the configuration so we have seen here we are providing the root view also we can provide default libraries which need to be loaded so when you look at the index.html you see here we are setting some default libraries etc here but as we mentioned that whole purpose of creating a component js is to maintain it as an independent application which means that there is no configuration in index.html which is dependent by the application so we have to make it very isolated for that we will be moving some configurations into the manifest so first thing first let me cut the root view because i wanted to move it so i'll put it over here the root view is nothing but a landing page from the view folder of the application namespace here so once we are done with the root view we'll move to the next settings which is dependencies so here we have to provide what is the minimum sdk version used by your application so i'll give min version so i need a minimum ui5 version and i'm using it as 1.93 that is the latest ui5 version but i want my application to use minimum version as 1.93 now let me specify the libraries which i want to be loaded by default so first i need is sap.m library and i am not providing any configurations for it i also need sap.ui.core which also i am loading as default because i am not giving any minimum version or lazy loading or anything like that i want it to be loaded by default so we have provided the libraries here now let me go ahead and add models so models is where we specify all the models required by the application so we have seen we were setting the resource model in your component js and we don't want those to be set in the component we are also moving that into the manifest because this application is using the resource model only once so we will try to access it through the manifest json so first model name is iatnn and let me provide the configuration for this we have to provide the type so the type is nothing but the one we have here which is sap.ui.model.resource.resource model so i'll move it i'll make it dot we have the type specified so we are providing the settings for this 
So what are the supported settings? So I'll open an instance of UFI SDK here. I'll go to API reference and I'll type resource model. So if you look here in the resource model, the settings what we are giving is nothing but the constructor of it. So we have to provide some properties from this, which is required by our application. So first thing we have to give is bundle name. So a bundle name points to the file from where the i 18 need to be loaded. So we will specify the namespace sap dot sijas dot sorry in dot sijas dot uifi dot app dot i18n so that is where our i18n file is located at so our bundle will be loaded from there and i think that's enough with this we are done with the manifest json also we have only created this we haven't connected that with the component chase so we will do that the next so all you need to do is provide manifest and tell it as json so once you do this our component js will automatically look for a manifest json adjacent to the component js which is over here and it loads data from that not enough we have to change something in the index.html to make it work Currently, we are loading everything from the index.js. So we will move that as well. So here we are creating a component container. So instead, we will directly try to load the application over index.html. So to do that, we will only call SAP slash UI slash core component support. So we will be initializing a module called standard module called sap.ui.core.component support and we are no more using the sap body content and load everything through here instead we will create a data class which will be automatically instantiating our component so for that we will create a diff tag and we will assign data dot ui hyphen component then we will give the next configuration which is nothing but the namespace it's nothing but in dot just dot ui5 dot app now we need to give the id as container and data hyphen settings and that is nothing but a json object which has the id i'll give this as app and i close the dip tag let me try formatting it so we have this here data hyphen and we are no no more loading the index.js and that's it let's try to run it so i'll give serve so let me open the browser and open the web app let's see if there is any errors and we can correct everything based on that. So let's see the sources. We have the index.html here. And our application is not loaded completely. So let me go ahead and check. And I have not saved it. So I have saved it. I'll come back here and refresh this. So we have our application loaded with our settings over here. So you can see here, we have the manifest explanation. The application is loaded. And if you look here, the index.html directly loaded our application using component JS and the configuration, we have to remove some configuration. So I'll just go ahead and remove those. So in component JS, we no more need the resource model. So I'm removing it. 
I'm removing it over here from here also as well. And the binding mode as well, I'll keep it. And here we have the application settings to resource bundle. So I'll just remove that as well. So with this, since we have removed the resource model and we have added that to the manifest JSON, we shouldn't see any change here. Second, we have an error. That is IETN is not defined in the component JS. So let's go to component JS and see what is the error over here. So here we have an error saying IETN is not defined. So for that we have to create a IETN file. So basically we are we were pointing to a variable which doesn't exist. So IETN is nothing but the this dot get model with name IATN. So since we have removed the reference to the resource model, we need to provide or we need to get it from the component JS. So with this, you can see here now the IATN model is loaded, but it doesn't provide the text properly. So let's see what changes we need to make for this. So I'll go back to the code, which is analyze it. Uh, let's go to manifest JSON. And first thing you see is here, until name is not pointing to the file, it is pointing to the folder IATN. So I have to specify the IATN file here. So basically, the bundle name is nothing but the namespace of the application, the folder where the IATN file, and the file name which is IATN.properties. Next thing we need is something called supported locales and fallback locales. So we have to specify the supported locales here. So we don't want our applications to be, you know, wandering around the entire uh, locales available. So for now, I give support, supported locales as empty and I need a fallback locale, which means that what happens if the locale which I requested doesn't available. So we have to fall back. So fallback locale also I'll be specifying as empty. Okay. Now let's go here and refresh. We see it is loaded. The text so hello is actually from the IETN. So just let me make some other changes. If I go to index.html, I see here uh, we made some mistake here. I have to make it settings. So I come here. Let's see. We do have an error. That means it is not a right uh, JSON file. So if you look at it, this is not right JSON. To make it a right JSON, I will specify single quote. Inside that, in double quotes, I need to provide ID. And in double quotes, I need to provide the app as the ID. Perfect. Also, since we have loaded our application uh, libraries from the component JS using manifest JSON, I'll remove this from here. I only need. And also one more thing which is very important is to provide the compact version. So I'll give it as data ap ui compact version and we need to provide it as edge because in future videos we will be using complex binding and we need app application to support it so, so we have successfully configured our application using component js and manifest js so my viewers uh, that's for today so today we have successfully configured our application using uh, manifest JSON. So which is nothing but an application descriptor. We have a clear cut separation between the component JS code and the configurations. And in future, we will be adding more and more configurations to manifest JSON. And this will make our application more readable and it will not make our component JS crowded. So with this, let's conclude for today. So if you have any questions, do post the comment. Support this channel by subscribing and sharing and liking the videos. See you guys in the next video.